You're listening to the Player Layer Podcast, where we talk about board games and game design. I'm your host, Ivan Alexiev, and today I've got two very special first-time game designers and Kickstarter creators. Anna and Lisa went from an initial idea for a game to 25 times over their funding goal in four months, with nine days left to back the Kickstarter. That's first idea two successfully funded in four months. The game is called Scarlet Envelope and it features a series of 13 mail-in mysteries all tied together in a larger storyline. Each game has a setting of its own, some are in the far past, others in the distant future, and they can be played in any order. They walked me through their process of making the games as well as the Kickstarter. Though it's their first Kickstarter, they both have a background in marketing and they really went in depth on their approach to making and marketing the game. Thanks for listening. I'm here with Anna Lisova and Lisa Levina, uh, who are the designers for Scarlet Envelope, a game which is on Kickstarter right now. And could you guys tell me a little bit about the game? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, first, thank you for having us here. We're really glad to be here today uh, to start the day with this. Uh, Scarlet Envelope is a mail-in game. Uh, it's the immersive puzzle game, uh, and it's uh, it consists of 13 episodes. So it's 13 separate envelopes that come to your mailbox. And in the envelopes, you will find uh, items that might be connected, might not be connected. It can be, uh, let's say, letters uh, from a diary, maps, um, plane tickets, things like that. And uh, there is also integration with web and video. And you have to solve a mystery in every episode. I think that's that's really cool. You definitely have a hook for the game, which is the mystery. What made you want to make a game in the first place? And when when did you start making the game? Well, we were fans of escape rooms for a long time. We even had our own team that would go to different rooms. Um, but when COVID started, it was kind of out of a picture. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't want to sound like a, you know, like a junkie <laughs> who needs a fix. But we, be, we definitely needed something to play, something to... Uh, get busy our brain with and we started uh looking around and we couldn't find a game that would suit our particular needs yeah because so we didn't even know letter mail games are a thing you know we only found them when the COVID started and we found a couple we tried a couple uh you know we liked some things we definitely liked the format that game can come to your house in a box or in an envelope and you can play with the items kind of like in, a, in an escape room but not really. And with all this virtual integration, that was fun as well. But we're the kind of customers who get, I guess, bored easily. And most of the subscriptions, they offer just uh, one topic. Like, let's say it's the detective-based story. So every game you get is some kind of a murder mystery thing with the same case files. Uh, maybe some items are different, but it's, it's like they're very much similar. And we wanted something that's a bit more crazy, yes, exactly. a bit more variety, I guess. And we thought, okay, well, how about we just start thinking about what we'd like to see, what we'd like to play. And we started, you know, fantasizing about all these things. Like one game could be in like medieval times or something. One game could happen in some beautiful era, like a uh, maybe... Paris, 19th century, something like that. Something could be like almost like a Scooby-Doo, something about ghosts or something from Agatha Christie. With yeah, a yeah. Mystery. So many fun scenarios. And it seemed like not a lot of people are working on something like this. And we just saw an opportunity here that seemed really fun and really creative. And our background is in content creation. So we're very familiar with all this. And with the design, and Lisa even has some um, education in engineering and architecture. So, you know, we feel comfortable making things, creating things. And we just tried. I literally sat down and I tried thinking of a scenario. And it was so much fun. I had so much fun. And we looked at it and we thought, okay, you know, we build a puzzle here, build a puzzle there. 
uh, add some detective storyline to it. So there is a twist and you've got suspects and you don't know which one to blame. Uh, and then, yeah, it just, it was really fun. And the first game we built is actually going to be our episode three. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, Lisa actually did all of the design work, like the graphic design for the game. How did you film the video? It looks really good. Well, we have equipment. We just sat <laughs> down one day for about what, four hours. Yeah, so see if you're familiar with the process, our main... Well, now I can even say not main, but I guess our first business is a content creation agency. And when I say agency, it's just us again. <laughs> you know, we can say boutique agency <laughs> and we create content for a living. So when we need a commercial real fast, we can pretty much manage it real fast. So we've got equipment, we've got room, uh, yes. a room, yeah, the, the lights, everything. Well, we didn't have the props, but we did know oh, about a beautiful antique shop in two hours from us. So we just drove to the antique shop, bought some beautiful, that's, you know, that's all real stuff. All you see in the video, that's real antique watch and this kind of thing. Uh, some really old diary and we just wanted something that feels really real and we filmed it with some smoke with some red light um, honestly we're gonna make a better commercial when we have time we did everything so fast it's it's a passion project and we felt really pressured in terms of time because of covid uh, because we wanted to launch kickstarter as soon as possible and it's it was a challenge 100 yeah, percent we can do better. That's what I'm saying. We're going to do better. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think it looks really good uh, so far. And it's very different from most of the Kickstarters that I've seen, especially in the because because you're not only focused on board gamers, but you're, you also have people who just like mysteries or people who like escape rooms. And you have a much wider audience than most of the Kickstarters that I see. Uh, and another great thing about it is uh, the production itself must be a lot easier than most Kickstarters uh, where they, they have to go ma manufacture it in China and so on. How are you going to uh, make all of the envelopes and the physical content that is going to be uh, delivered? So the items that are uh, more you know straightforward in terms of manufacturing, uh, we actually uh, we have one printing machine at home already, but it's not advanced enough. Uh, because it literally broke. We're <laughs> we were printing so much, it gave up. <laughs> we were printing the first game to be ready to start shipping right away, and it it literally gave up two times. Actually, yeah, it got... gave up. We got a replacement from the company. It gave up again. We were like, okay, R.I.P. We get it. You're just not, you know, strong enough for this. So we got the more uh, industrial, <laughs> yeah, laser printer now. Who... It's a bit more sturdy, mm. and uh, every, <laughs> everything from newspapers to hard carton, we do ourselves. And sophisticated items, like let's say in the game too, we've got a tarot card. Okay, I don't want to spoil it, but you got to do something with the tarot card, and it's not that easy. It's not just a printing. It's like interaction with the item that is a bit more sophisticated. Uh, I am a control freak, and if I had time and skill, I would do it myself 100%. But we do have people we trust uh, who have a printing company, and we just we delegate things like that, and we have it. Like, uh, like cards and stickers yeah. and everything that is more high maintenance, I guess. Yeah, because we also we need to make sure you know we're not experimenting with anything. If we know how to do it, we're going to do it ourselves. If we don't, we're just going to have some professionals do it for us. And okay, maybe we're going to pay a bit more, but at least we're going to be um, confident that the quality is there. Yeah, and how did you go about testing the game? Yeah, we had a little bit of everything. Yeah, so we had people, we had a lot of people who are into escape rooms because initially we actually saw that that's going to be our audience, only them. We, not, we didn't think of it as a board game. <laughs> Yeah, we really didn't. You know, it, it's such a passion project. We really didn't think through a lot of things. No, nope. uh, like <laughs> we we definitely weren't ready for all the attention we got on Kickstarter. We're still pinching ourselves. We had no idea we can raise uh, thirty thousand dollars in like what a month. That's that's crazy. We we weren't 
like expecting this one. <laughs> uh, so we had a lot of escape room players. Uh, we had some board game players, like hardcore ones, and, and just some regular fam- some families with kids and just some regular people. Um, yeah, those were friends, just like uh, people who were into it. Um, like when you tell them, okay, so this is a game in an envelope and you solve the mystery and they just go, oh my God, wow, that's interesting. I do not know how to do this and I don't think I'm smart enough, but I'm going to do it. So we just wanted to see... Um, the feedbacks from different categories of people. Yeah, because the hardest part is to find this balance where the game seems... Not too hard, not too yeah Easy. just just the right amount just, just the right amount of brain teasing it's really hard because there are different levels of players but that's why we also have two levels of difficulty in the games because we really found that it's nearly impossible to find something that's perfect for everyone but if you do feel that you're an advanced player um you know, you want a bit more attention to, you, you want to spend more time. You want to suffer a little. You want to suffer a little. Yeah. And we want to give you this opportunity to suffer a little. 100%. Pleasure. Yeah. And for people who are not prepared to suffer so much. It's more fun experience. Yeah. It's more about, you know, observing details, I would say. Um, that's what I like. I, I love puzzles and I've been solving puzzles for such a long time, but I suck at them. Like, I'll be honest. I suck, but I love it. Like, I love to go and just see all the five hints because sometimes I don't get it, but it it still clicks in my head. So I would definitely play the starter level, the level we have for beginners, you can say. Uh, but Lisa is much better at this stuff. Lisa would definitely play advanced, I feel. Yeah. And, and if there were some physical locks, you would love that as well. <laughs> when we had the team play in escape rooms, Lisa was a person who... Uh, breaks lock all the, picking. yeah, lock picking, <laughs> you know, or getting through all the doors there. <laughs> I was thinking about this before we started the interview. How do you make the mystery itself? I imagine, like, I imagine it would be you start off with the n- knowing the end of it and work backwards. Am I right about that, or how how do you usually? make the no no actually not really yeah it just it figures it out itself as we go it's it's really it's such an exciting fascinating process for me honestly it's uh so the team it's not just us i mean of course we do most of the work uh the absolute most but we still have help we have a person who's helping us with storylines tanya if you listening to this thank you so much um, she's helping us with the part where we figure out the twist. And, well, we also have a proofreader because we need that. We respect our customers. We know that. Uh, illustrator, because I yeah. don't illustrate that well. <laughs> yeah, illustrator for, like, heavy illustrations and things like that. Yeah, 100%. So with the story, it usually goes... Uh, so we'll be on the call with Tanya, the storyteller, um and we usually have an idea so she asks okay uh, what are we working on this month and we go okay so we were thinking (laughs) how about cosmos no actually like space we we just did it ourselves some some games we just write ourselves some we need help with it's 13 games it's a lot um so okay let's say a game to cabaret yeah so i i went okay so we definitely have some murder mystery. There's some serial killer catch, and we're definitely going to have some space because we're space geeks. But we also want something that's, you know, beautiful and fancy, something that has this... Um, Great Gatsby film. Yeah, something like that. And I went, okay, maybe uh, Paris in 19th century, end of 19th century, what they call beautiful era. That's a beautiful time to... Um, just to, to have this atmosphere to work on these decorations. I would personally love that. And we went, okay, who would be a hero of this story? Well, probably a woman because it's this beautiful area. It'd be so cool to have a beautiful lady as our uh, main character. And we thought, okay, well, cabaret would be a great uh, kind of setup for all this stuff. And what happens to a beautiful woman when we definitely don't want to kill her because it's a bit too hardcore. She's all beautiful and everything we don't want players to suffer so much especially in the game too so let's say she disappeared and we need to find her and we need to figure out what happened and not to be too obvious we're not just looking for a girl who disappeared 
it just looks like we're looking for a girl who disappeared, but actually she has some kind of a dark secret. And the whole game becomes something else. It becomes um, unraveling the mystery of our beautiful Colette, who's actually not really even a Colette. And she has some really dark stuff happening in her life. <laughs> and so we just, uh, after that, you know, we just kind of like, it's a snowball. So we're just trying to figure out what would be um, suitable for this type of game we want, for the atmosphere and vibe we want. And we also don't want to repeat ourselves because we know that something is planned for game six, something is planned for game eight. So we go, okay, well, definitely not going to be, you know, a lot of case files here. So we don't want that. Maybe we go a bit heavier on QR codes and videos of this game. And it no, just, <laughs> okay, not, <laughs> no, of course not, not cabaret. No, cabaret is more like, uh, we've got a mystery box there that has like her jewelry and secrets and you gotta unlock this mystery box part digitally part playing with the items like there is a tarot card there also maybe not the first thing you expect to see in a cabaret game but it's fun it just kind of happened we were like okay well the chick from 19th century you know what would she be into Where probably like tarot games yeah in the box she'd well, probably not. have a jewelry box <laughs> yeah and for this you know to to get inspired and to figure out what the story would be uh we watch movies we read books i do a lot of research in terms of just history like i didn't know anything about this time in france i never even been to france to be honest but i would love to and so I needed to watch a lot on YouTube, read a lot of Wikipedia, talk to some people. And it's mostly Tanya who, you know, watches the movies and, like, goes to read some parts of the books, find some old, like, notes. I found a beautiful guide that's translated from French. Um, it's like a guidebook for American tourists uh, who were going to France in... Uh, 1900 because there was this fair happening the, the trade show oh, happening yeah. In yeah and there was a whole guide for them you know like best cabarets to go to best places to visit it's so like it's it has this little quotes in french it's beautiful it's so nice i just i used a lot of just got inspired by it a lot used a couple things from it so long story short yeah it starts the story tanya progresses the story gets the twist and then it come back to me, and I do. Uh, you know what she does. Part. You know what she does. She comes. She comes to us. She totally just kills everything we did. She just goes, okay, this, this really, this, this stinks. <laughs> you girls don't know what you're doing. Yeah, like I'm telling you, poor Tanya. Like I think Tanya's struggling so much because she's so into the storylines she wrote and everything. So yeah, Lisa. Um, I feel that me and Tanya we get really. Uh, uh, carry the way, <laughs> carry the the way. yeah in the story we create and then we need someone who's a bit bold uh in opinions <laughs> and so that's lisa and she just goes okay girls this is all fun and nice but uh, it's just not enough we need some kind of a puzzle here and there is and not here, enough here, here, and here and here. here and there is not enough interaction with the physical items we're not you know uh, cutting paper, slicing paper. There is no fire. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> More so we, yeah, so we spice it up and the whole process of really spicing it up and making it balanced. And, uh, you know, we have a certain amount of puzzles we want to have. Yeah. We have a certain a time, like gameplay, uh, we want to have in every game. So to really make the story, uh, ready to go as a game, this can take up to a month per game, really sometimes sometimes like the whole storyline and creating the mystery that's the easy part. part that takes like maybe three days of really being into it really researching and writing um so yeah <laughs> yeah that sounds it sounds like a re really cool process and I, I love it when you can work together with other people in order to make an idea become something real that <laughs> you know a, re a real game what about the mm -hmm. All the web-based stuff you have. Oh, so Lisa, see if if Lisa leaves this project, it all falls apart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, good good thing we're a couple, so she's stuck here. Yeah, so Lisa does the web, and we don't really have anything that's 
that sophisticated. Like, oh, you know, a it's not games and some interaction on web. Okay, but that's not okay. By sophisticated, I mean like you know, e-commerce stuff with, with with cards and this type of stuff. So no, we don't need a developer who's super experienced. But you know what? We have it because we're <laughs> because we're an agency and we do this type of thing. Uh, so all this, you know, create a landing page, make it look like a real um, news outlet, and have some kind of an interactive game going on on the page. It's easy for us. Uh, it's what we do for a living anyway. But we usually do boring things, you know, for real clients who sell boring things. Uh, and here we go crazy. And this month it's some kind of a uh, chat in the space where AI is talking to you from a spaceship with an SOS signal. And next month it's a mystery jewelry box from Paris. That's, you know, that's the jazz. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it sounds like uh, you're having a lot of fun while uh, doing it. I, I know you're from a marketing agency, but how did you do the marketing for the game itself? Uh, like I've seen mm -hmm. you, you did some Facebook uh, contests, which I won one of. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's how we met. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what else did you do for marketing in order to get it in front of people? Mm -hmm. Well, so we had the whole, you know, marketing strategy. Wait, let's really. start from... The fact that we didn't know how to market Kickstarter. Oh my God, yes, 100%. So yes, we are a marketing agency, but we never had a client on Kickstarter. Uh, we just, we're not a crowdfunding marketing agency. So I literally, I never even been on Kickstarter that much. I never backed anything. There are leases there, yes. I'm just not, I don't know. So, you know, I looked at all of it. And I got really intimidated by the whole platform. I'll, I'll tell you that. So, um, maybe if any newbies are listening to us, if any, anyone is just do starting pre out, turns out, pre yeah. Is oh the my thing. God. Do pre launch. <laughs> like we made all the mistakes we could. And, but no regrets. Uh, it's a learning process. And I was totally, I was totally ready to honestly, I don't know why, but I was totally ready to even fail. I was like, you know, we're just gonna, we're just gonna do our best. If it's not enough, okay, you know, I get it. It's fine. For some reason, I had this mindset that almost, you know, it was hard for me to really believe that I can be making real money on something I create that makes me so happy. I know it sounds like a cult of therapist, but really, um, with the marketing agency, we compromise a lot. We love the creative process. We love doing it. But, you know, client is always right and all this type of thing. And it's not on, always the projects you love. Uh, but here, it was something that we were so passionate about. And it really seemed like everyone really loves the game. The play testing stage went really well. We had some influencers look at the game as well. And everyone was, uh, you know, happy with it. And we were happy as well. But... You know, when we went to Kickstarter and there's this line, what's your goal? And you have to, you have to think money. You have to really expect people to pay for your game. And we never had this experience. Yeah, we just put like our marketing budget for like a month. Yeah, because, you know, we were thinking so small. We were like, okay, you know what? If you just cover our expenses for the ads, we're already going to be so grateful. <laughs> and I also um, read a lot of things and listened to a lot of podcasts on Kickstarter and how to do everything right. And no one seems to have an answer to this question. Everyone has different experiences. But a lot of people say you want to set the goal that gets um, funded in two days because allegedly the Kickstarter algorithms will be promoting you better if the Kickstarter sees that you can reach a goal really fast. There are a lot of other things that go into it as I learned on the go, like uh, cancellations apparently don't really matter, but the amount of new people who are backing you, if it, even if it's not a huge amount, um, every backer really means a lot. And the comment section really means a lot. And you need to be interactive. You need to answer the messages real fast. So all these things. And so we set a goal that was really small. We set $1,500 as a goal and we reached it in two hours and we were, oh my God, uh, on adrenaline line for like at least 10 days after that. We were working nonstop. We ditched all, almost all the work we had for the agency because there was 
there is just not enough hours in the day. We were totally unprepared to launch all the updates. So all the updates you saw, I know they all look really good, but we were making them on the go. Like we did not have a single update ready to go. So we were like, oh my God, now we need to say thank you for funding us. Now we need to set the stretch goals. Oh my God, we already met the stretch goal. (laughs) Uh, we need another stretch goal next day. Oh my God, we need another stretch goal. That was, it was crazy, but it was one of the best experiences I've had in my life, we had, honestly. We had the pre-launch for like, what, three, four days? Oh, yeah. So, you know, we, we have everything ready. Imagine for the Kickstarter, we have a campaign page, a video, all the photos are ready. We feel that we're ready. We have the marketing budget, um, and the ads are ready to go, everything. And then, I see someone have this pre-launch page where you click notify me when it launches. And I see that this project has like 300 people there. And I go, damn it. Why didn't I know about this? I, I like research so much, but it's, it's, like, it's almost impossible to learn something so fast and, you know, actually do a really good so, job, so even just... if you're an experienced marketing person. So I went, okay, I had the, I had the, uh, like a breakdown. I was, uh, <laughs> I was going, okay, we should just cancel everything because we didn't have a pre-launch page. You know, no one's going to be notified that we're launching. I don't know how we missed this. Yes, we have some people. Um, yeah, we did the landing the... page and we got a small Okay, I probably of... have to say, you know, all the steps in the strategy just like oh, yeah, real fast. Question. Yeah, that was the question. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so that's what we did. We totally forgot about the pre-launch page. So people do that 100%. So promote your pre-launch page first. Uh, you don't have a link to your main campaign yet, but you do have a link to pre-launch page. So maybe... Spent at least, I'd say, two to four weeks just promoting the pre-launch page because you need this uh, crowd that is really waiting for you to launch. Uh, we didn't do it. So maybe if you're in a rush and crazy just like us, try doing what we did. But oh, you, you're not going to sleep and you're going to have a lot of coffee. If you're ready for that, go for it. Um, so the marketing strategy I was basing everything on is uh, pretty much, I call it generosity. That's what I suggest for a lot of my clients, because when you just starting out and no one really knows you, it's really good to be generous. It's really good to get your product in people's houses. And you just you don't really want to think about the money you waste on giving away things. You're not wasting it. You're investing it in your future. So we had four giveaways. We had one with the group um, on Facebook. So I just arranged it with the admin. You can do it anytime. But. Make sure to do it in advance because uh, most groups have a lot of spots that are not just available for a month ahead or something like that. I was lucky enough to find one group that that had a spot available. Just someone canceled and they were like, okay, we can have you in two days. And I was like, this is crazy. Great. Thank you. Um, so we also launched giveaways from our Instagram page, which had zero followers and Facebook page, which had, you guessed it, zero followers. Um, and we also had a giveaway on the landing that page. That was our pre-launch page. Yeah. So for this, you would definitely need to go to a marketing agency. It's a bit more advanced. But yes, you set up a, a landing page with all the call to actions in place. So we got you got a uh, contact us form there where they put their email to be notified when the winners are selected. Uh, so all the giveaways were like flash giveaways. So only five days or so and, um, the winners are announced and everything is promoted heavily on social media with ads and like pretty much everywhere. Facebook feeds, uh, stories, Instagram stories, um, everything you can use that looks good and makes sense. Like you don't want to go some placements are weird, like uh, marketplace or Facebook. That's weird. So that happened. So people, of course, are willing to share their email, share their information with you when they know that they will likely, they are likely to really win some prize. Uh, because, well, with our giveaways, it was 33 winners in total. So your chances are pretty good with a new company. You know, you can see they have zero followers and there's 33 winners uh, well, to be announced. So that's a good chance. So we did that. And, uh, we got, in total, we got like 500 followers on Instagram, around maybe 150 people, um, sharing the email. 
and maybe 100 followers on Facebook. So when you think about it, uh, maybe that's not such a crazy number, like maybe 700 people or so. But when you think about it again and multiply it by the price of your game, that actually makes you kind of excited. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Of course, you understand that everyone will uh, really buy the game, but still, that's some traffic that's really uh, already hot and qualified for a lead, so that's a really good thing. So we did that. That was the initial traffic to, you know, start the Kickstarter, kind of kickstart the Kickstarter. And I guess because we reached the goal fast, Kickstarter started promoting us really actively so most of the yeah we don't even do ads anymore no no, we don't so so we stopped the ads were for maybe 10 days maybe two weeks stops and then we just stopped them because the kickstarter was just doing our better job than ads yeah most of the money we raised it's just um the recommendations page advanced search uh, um and this type of stuff and of course of course updates are really important we can 100 percent see that we get uh, sales just from the update emails on Kickstarter. So we already have what nine updates. It's been a month and it's nine updates and most of them were like first 10 days. So we were just like going crazy, you know, thank you update, then first stretch goal update, all the stretch goals unlocked update. Then, you know, we have this little incentive for all the people on Kickstarter, the sticker pack that is 100% custom art. Uh, so we hired an illustrator uh, because, well, you know, we're not going to just order some crap on Alibaba or something. <laughs> we're going to create something because we can. <laughs> again, uh, again, we just make it. Not that it's right? No, no, not, of course not. But what I mean is uh, you can see that we're really we're having bit, fun with this. We are a bit of a control breaks a little bit. Yes, and we want to... We want to have something that would make ourselves excited. And we are the kind of customers that don't get excited easily. So we're like, okay, if I were to buy this Kickstarter game for $200, you know, they would really need to make it worth it. So (laughs) I thought, okay, sticker pack with 100% custom arts uh, that we, you know, really thought through that look really cool. So. We are revealing all the designs one by one uh, to keep the uh, followers excited. Yeah, so updates, updates, updates. updates. updates so so yeah. marketing strategy was freak out, pour a bunch of ads into it, <laughs> and then stop. <laughs> no, you don't stop. You just you start. Yeah, you start really working, focusing on the other things. Focusing on the Kickstarter, and I just learned that the comment section is really important. For me, it was just obvious that you know if people are asking me questions, I, I, answer. <laughs> I answer them real fast because I respect them. But I'm sure there are some people who think, okay, that's fine. I'll just reply in three days. Well, apparently it's not fine for Kickstarter, so try to do it fast. And that's pretty much the whole marketing strategy. Of course, a lot of content creation as well. Also, you know, it's just obvious for me, but I guess maybe not for everyone. Um, almost every day we're posting something on Instagram and on Facebook, again, to keep people excited. Not something annoying, but something fun, like a sticker reveal, some prototypes, um, again, like just taking new pictures of the items that we already printed and stuff like this. Yeah, you're doing a good job of keeping people excited and engaged with the, the product. Um, what I like about the product the most is probably like i mentioned earlier the hook which is which i think i think it actually has several hooks like first of all is the really cheap shipping uh right i think you're offering free shipping to canada and the u.s right yeah yeah yeah, yeah we just uh we are making a dent in our own pocket just to yeah. uh, please <laughs> Our customers. Yeah, I don't necessarily recommend that uh, to everyone because, yeah, well, you de- you decide, you know, how to subsidize these things. But we decided that we are willing to uh, lose a bit. Again, we're new and young, and we really want people to to just try the games out. We really need feedback. We really want them to play. So we feel that it's worth it right now. I guess maybe for the second Kickstarter or oh, no. so, it's <laughs> yeah, not oh, going to no. be that. Yeah, we're not going to be that generous. So What I mean is the product that you chose is easy to ship because a lot of times, you know, with board games, like, 
yeah, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. That's what we saw too, Ivan. Like that, <laughs> we were like, oh my god, they're so smart. You know, it's not a box. It's, it's the chicken stamp. is cheap. It's a stamp. It's beautiful. Oh, Canada Post. <laughs> Canada post. Oh, Canada <laughs> post. It's crazy. And all the customs with the COVID, that's right now, that's just the worst time to ship anything that's not tracked. And of course, it's, it just, well, it's not worth it if the stamp is like $3 and the tracking system is like 10 extra. I don't think anyone would like to pay that really. So, so again, we expect some. Problems, yeah, but we are willing. Yeah, we already so because we launched um so we are on Kickstarter, but we also launched directly um we have a website and you already can order the first game from us if you don't want to wait for Kickstarter for some reason and you would like a subscription. So we do have uh, not a lot, but some clients um that are ordering games from us directly and we already you know, have all kinds of issues. Um, like the letters just bounce. Uh, they just they come back. Well, they come back because clients put like a wrong address. Oh, okay. We well, no, them. I'm not talking about that one situation. But also, some just uh, some just get uh, lost, and there's no reason to that really. Just COVID. Maybe it's gonna come in the months, but they want it now, and we feel bad. Mm, so we again. we send it again. We replace it. So we use you know we lose money on the not just on the shipping stamp that's cheap we lose money on the production of the game again because we're young and new we're doing all we can to be as generous as we can we are going to replace it we are going to give you a refund where it's uh, suitable but where it makes sense the big bulk of shipments we're probably going to use a company who's going to transport letters to us directly and yeah. give it to uh U.S. mail system like yeah. directly, so yeah, they don't have to cross the border. Yeah, we're working on that because um, most of our customers on Kickstarter yeah. are from U.S., and we want to make sure that uh, the letters will not get lost somewhere on the border or something. So we're going to make sure it goes smoothly, and that's also one of the reasons we had to um, offer shipping in the box instead of shipping 13 envelopes separately. So now on Kickstarter, we offer all kinds of options. You can choose this, so you can choose that. And, you know, it's also, that that takes so much time to figure all this out. Oh, my God. Box is harder to lose. So the person, uh, so three games will come in envelopes. Say one of them get lost. Okay, we'll replace it. And then the rest will be in the box. But it's I really, I really hate for it to happen. Imagine yeah. the person gets 13 games and the third one is missing, let's say, and well, they were waiting for it for such a long well, time. Well, good thing is they can play in any order, except for the last game. Yes. And the first game. Yes. So another thing that I didn't really mention. So the 13 envelopes we have, right? Um, they do have a storyline that connects all of them and it's a secret society themed storyline. Um, that they will learn through game one. Um, are we all also going to have game zero? That is the exclusive add on to, uh, for all the Kickstarter backers. And game zero is also about the main secret society storyline. It's like a prequel to the secret society game master story. Uh, but all the episodes are like, Mm. episodes they don't have to be in any particular order you don't learn one story from them you just learn pieces that you'll need to connect in the end to play the last game yeah so in, in towards in game one uh you meet the secret society that's been watching you and if you pass the test that is game one and also an introduction game to the puzzles that gets you familiar with all the types of puzzles we're gonna have you go uh we're gonna have you play with um you get kind of like accepted to the secret society and um, games from 2 to 12 are just your like time traveling and world traveling with the secret society. That's why you go to, uh, you know, to Paris in 19th century or to space or to medieval times. It's just the tests that you have to pass to uh, carry on in the secret society. And game 13, the last one in the chapter is the initiation where game master really decides if you're worth um, keeping in the secret society and going to another level kind of thing. 
and the initiation will be a hard game. It's gonna it's be a it's, little bit different type yeah. of the game. It's gonna be a completely different type of a game in the sense that um, for even for the beginners, it's it's not just gonna be like recreational fun. It's it, they're gonna suffer if they, <laughs> uh, but it's uh, we're gonna make sure it, it feels really good. And we're gonna have like an actual scoring system to the thirteenth game. So it's so like a test. It's passes. like a test. There and they're gonna be winners of this test. And uh, the people who do um, the best, who's gonna do the best in this game, A plus and, and stuff like that, they're gonna get actual prizes. And some prizes will be, you know, digital, like maybe promo codes or something like this. And there are gonna be physical prizes as well. And it's also, you know, we don't have to do it, I understand, but isn't it fun? It, it feels so exciting for us. We want to do it. We want to see who can, you know, ace all the... Yeah, ace exactly. it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just love the the whole idea of it so so much. And the, the 13th game, actually, I saw on the website, you need to unlock it, right? With the right. first 12 right. games. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so there's going to be a password to it. And to collect the password, you need to... Um, you need to collect letters from games 1 to 12. We're going to hide the letters in all the games. So you can play them any order you want, but you need to know the order to know where letters go. Yeah, so so yeah, so yeah, here's the thing. People will not be able to play game 13 no, no, if they haven't played not. everything else. Yeah, but that is the way we want to we wanna go. And also, you know, when you buy... Uh, the games directly from us, it's a subscription. It's not the type of um, offering that is on the Kickstarter. And the subscription, of course, uh, just from the business uh, point of view, we want to keep you subscribed. We want to keep you uh, excited and engaged, even if it means uh, playing for the whole year, playing like monthly. And that's why we have this game 13, you know, a bit different. And what about your plans for the future? Because you, you mentioned on our next Kickstarter. Do you have anything in mind? Well, we definitely know there's going to be another Kickstarter because it's like it's we like got, a drug. <laughs> yeah, we got hooked. Honestly, so much emotion, such an emotional roller coaster, so much adrenaline. I, I well, never felt it, I think, before in my life. So we're definitely going to do something. And yes, we have ideas. From the very beginning, we thought of two ideas for games. Yeah. Subscription and envelopes. And another one is a bit more party game, but it's also a mystery. So we are we are researching the mechanics of this game right now. And we are thinking like, we don't have much time to think about this game but yeah no not do... right now not right now of course because now we need to be working on all the 13th game games right so and so our... it's just in the back of our heads right now that we want to do this party game yeah so something something like this but something that people would be able to play uh, say at the birthday party something less uh detective less escape more fun. mystery more fun Still more mystery. maybe you know maybe you got drunk a bit on the party but you don't want to just you know hang out and drink the whole evening you would like to do something fun with your friends and actually connect to them but not in a overly intellectual way but something that's really fun to do so we're thinking about it but it, it has to be balanced it has to be tested uh, it's definitely not nearly ready yet and we're also thinking about one card game idea we have and there we actually already have the balance but it has to be like branded and everything i don't think it's going to be anytime soon oh, we don't have time. <laughs> yeah so you know we don't have time to even think about it but um and there, if everything goes smoothly we're also going to have season two to scarlet envelope Oh, we we really want to do it, and it's going to be something a bit different. Maybe a box. Maybe it's going to be a box. Who knows? <laughs> if, if we want it to be a box, yeah. So we'll see how it goes. And for now, we really need to focus on what we already promised, because uh, we're promising a lot, and we understand that, and we totally um, we want to deliver. We and would like to keep our promise. Absolutely, and you know, we understand that the expectations are high. Uh, because everything is, um, everything has a hook. Everything yeah. looks so nice and interesting and mysterious. And we want to meet these expectations and we're going to do our best. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's definitely a, a difficult thing to do when you set expectations high and then you have to, uh, also deliver on it. But I, I really hope that, that you can. And by the sound of it, I think you will because uh, I can see all the passion that you've put into it. Another awesome thing is how you've made this system 
where you can have any setting you want like like you said like uh in outer space or in paris or in different times and i think it, yeah. it, that that just gives you so much freedom in one storyline so I, i i can't wait to learn more about it yeah i'm really excited for you to play and tell us how you like it for sure for sure yeah it just um we wanted to be like a, a bit of a crazy mix of everything we find fascinating just because um It's not just fun for our customers. I believe that it has to be fun for us as well. And we really, I kind of feel that we're immersing in this world sometimes even more than our customers <laughs> maybe will be immersed during the game. Because in order to create the game that actually um, gives you all these vibes, um, you have to really work a lot and you have to really research a lot. And we're really enjoying it for sure. Yeah, definitely. I I don't know. I I kind of I know what you you mean because uh I've been designing games with my brother for the past two three years maybe and I I I'm almost certain that it's always more fun for us. Uh, <laughs> though though we have made good games. <laughs> I mean, um, people also like the games, but I I always feel like the process itself, the creative process, is is something that I I prefer sometimes to playing other people's games. Um, though I like playing other people's games as well, like your game, hopefully yeah. soon. Yeah, for sure. Yes, yeah, same. We're doing a lot of, um, you know, swapping envelopes with uh, other businesses. We're doing mailing games, and it's also really fun, and we love doing it and love giving feedback to each other. And also, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to everyone in this industry who's been so generous and kind to us because we're We're new, uh, but we've been welcomed so warmly. Warmly, really, everyone's been really kind, and um, some people uh, were kind enough to invite us to a lot of, you know, private groups and forums to really talk about things in terms of from the creative's perspective, and just to connect with hardcore puzzle players. Do you know that's a th that's a thing? It's not just board game players. Puzzle players, people that are so advanced in puzzle solving, their feedback is, oh, it's just crazy detailed and it's absolutely it's so valuable. And especially negative feedback. <laughs> negative feedback is something that helps you grow so much. Yeah, positive feedback doesn't help you grow. Positive, well, I don't know, it just helps you, you know, be confident, which is also very important. So, uh, so I just want to say that this industry uh, is so welcome and really different yeah competitors are not enemies in this mm -hmm. industry competitors uh, want to partner want to inspire each other and of course if some people will be just you know straight um, duplicating each other it's not going to be great but no one does that everyone mm -hmm. wants to everyone wants to contribute something new and fresh to the industry and i am really enjoying it it's really nice to be here i'm Curious if the board game industry, you know, without the escape room and puzzle component is the same. I feel like maybe not so much. Board game industry seems to be very... A bit more, um, pro not professional, but like business-like, I guess. Maybe a bit less like a passion project, but I might be wrong. But I'm really excited to also get to know this industry better. Go to all the expos when they're open again, you know, connect mm -hmm. with people who are in board game industry as well. Well, I've, I've found that uh, th those same things that you said, I thought you were talking about the board game industry because th those yeah. are my, yeah, those are, that's how I, I, I feel about the board game industry. There's not so much competitiveness like you said between people and people try to help each other out and when somebody sees somebody's project and thinks it's cool they they share it and it's uh it's not yeah. you're not hiding your work and you know i think the reason is that you know it, it's not a say a car you just choosing mostly one car to drive right and with the board game or like a mail-in subscription If you're a fan of this type of thing, you would like to play different things. You would like to have a variety. You would like to have a lot of board games on your shelf. And with the mailing subscription, also, if it only comes monthly, well, you've got like 30 more evenings in the month, maybe. So you've got time. And people really love 
um, just sharing what they find. And I already know that a lot of people who are backing us on, in, on Kickstarter have five, six subscriptions to similar things. And it's fascinating for me. I feel like it's, it's a lot, but I also think that it's, it's actually really great that, you know, they, that's how they tease in their brains and they feel comfortable with just discovering new things and doing different things, different games. But it's nice to know that board game industry is also the same. Yeah, it's it's great. It's great to hear. And it, it's like, I definitely wasn't expecting that, you know, like a month ago, we didn't know anyone in this industry. And now just a couple of days ago, um, Rita Orlov, uh, that's the girl who had a crazy successful Kickstarter. Uh, she raised like $300,000 on her game Emerald Flame. Beautiful. Uh, beautiful game. Really excited for it. It's a puzzle game as well. She just reached out to me being like, Hey, I'm creating a newsletter and I'm featuring new projects that I find exciting. Can you, you know, send me a picture? And it seems like a small thing to do, but she doesn't have to, you know, in a lot of industries, she wouldn't, right? Because she doesn't want the, um, all this competitiveness. But here it's, it's a thing. But yeah, it's just, when we, you know, when we're big enough to start featuring other projects and having our own newsletter, we're definitely going to be doing it as well. Definitely going to be suggesting other companies, you know, saying what we love to play this week or that week. And I'm really excited about it as well. And for everyone who wants to start in this industry, I guess I just want to say that, you yes. know, you're likely to have a really nice experience if you're also generous and kind to others. And I highly, yeah, I highly recommend being here, honestly. Yeah, I, I think it's something that just spreads, and it's it's awesome to have it keep spreading. I, I was so surprised in the beginning because my my first experience of the board game industry, my my brother and I had made our first board game, and we decided to go to a contest uh, where <laughs> it was like prototypes, and everyone shows off their games. And at first, like we weren't expecting people to be friendly towards us as much as they were w w uh, with us being new there and at the same time with, with the other people being competition, basically, <laughs> you know? And it's something that we found again and again. Like, last year we went to Essenspiel, which was which is, like, the the biggest uh, board game convention in the world. And we went there because a, fr a friend of ours who we met just two or three weeks ago at another uh, place said, I have room in in my booth and I don't have that many games to sell. Uh, you guys can come and oh, nice. the booth. it was like it's just all these doors are opening you know at least from from what i've seen people do try and help each other out and they want to see each other's projects grow and it's it's something that i haven't seen in other industries that i've been involved in yeah same same and also you know i just want to say that Mm, there are a lot of game designers who have different backgrounds, like so different, right? I was just listening to a podcast of French guys, mm -hmm. and they have their own, you know, angle to everything. And we've got Russian background, and we're also highly influenced by the way Russian board games are made, maybe. And uh, we also, like, our English is not perfect 100% because we have Russian background. And it's also not a problem, you know, everyone's understanding and everyone is really kind and everyone understands, okay, well, you have a different background. Well, you've got a proofreader 100%, right? So you respect your uh, customers, you hire a proofreader to make sure like that it's, games it's are not, it's not, top notch quality. Yeah, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. It's really lovely to see that nothing is a big deal as long as you create something that's new as long as you provide value and uh, you're doing something cool on the market everyone's excited for it and nothing is a big deal because mm -hmm. i myself i know that um a lot of things like i overthink things 100 percent. like with the kickstarter when we set a goal to 1500 dollars, it's uh, it's the problem of not being confident enough to expect people to pay enough uh, and this, I think, will really pass. Like once we feel more comfortable in this field, once we know more people, and if just in a month uh, the changes are so 
like dramatic. I don't even know what's gonna happen in here, and I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen. Yeah, so am I. Uh, thank you so much for for taking the time to talk to me and be on the podcast. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you. Pleasure. It was just pure fun. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Yeah.